Yeah, we are so happy to have President Kwan and Professor Kao with us. And actually everything we really, yeah, thanks uh, Dr. Tim. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he called one, one, one day and said that uh, his classmate's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we made the effort to go and see you and, and very nice, that very graceful that President Kwan yeah, come here to, sh to share with us. I know how long ago you visited Taiwan and you became a friend with uh, Andrew Kao. Andrew Kuo. Andrew Kuo. Yeah. And because I saw in the Facebook. Yep. You <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Kuo used to be in our group. Oh, okay. And, and he laid on, he gave a talk before and then he went back to Taiwan and got married. <laughs> so stay there, settle there. Okay. Now today, uh, <coughs> The, the background of, uh, of President Kwan and Professor Kao, you can find it here. Yeah. And they're really yeah, very nice. And then you know that Claremont may be one of the, uh, the most open-minded liberal place, yeah, especially in California, I guess. Mm. Yeah. So uh, we're so happy to, to have both of you come here and share with us. And I know both of your background is Christ Christian, mm -hmm. but yeah, from whatever standpoint, I know President Kwan really fought for LGBT. You, you know what that is? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. in the in the home. And I think that that's a, a really liberal view of uh, whatever <laughs> yeah, we we the religion went through. Mm -hmm. And uh, Professor Cow is, is pretty much a feminism. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very much into it. So uh, that's also a very liberal thought. Mm -hmm. Because whatever the old Bible, if you go liberal uh, explanation, then everybody got tied up in, in uh, some really uh, a special place. Mm -hmm. So we are so happy to, to have both of you. And uh, after his talk, I, I sp uh, uh, distribute some of the um, four by six cards. If you have question, you know, we do it. You know, hand one, sure, huh? Ah, now no cow ho, the cow show, he is a Hindu, and that money. I was uh, the second hour would be the, the most interesting because you, you never expect what kind of question. You get. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So without further introduction, yeah, here's President Gordon. Uh, let me begin by saying how grateful uh, Professor Kao and I are to Dr. Ye for the kind invitation to, to, to come and spend this time with you. Uh, I wish I can speak Taiwanese. <laughs> I understand Taiwanese. I understand word for word Taiwanese. But uh, because I was educated in English, I've never, I've never learned, uh, I've never learned enough of the vocabulary to be able to, to lecture in, 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 in Mandarin Chinese or in Taiwanese. Uh, as Dr. Ye said, I am a, I'm a product of the church. I grew up uh, as a, in, a, in, in a Christian family, but I, as, as I would say, in, in, in many ways an interreligious family. And I will talk more about that. And uh, I grew up in 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 the within much more uh, a the, the kind of a multicultural multi-ethnic but the uh, church that i i grew up with was uh was hokkien speaking and so i grew up with banam sing si i grew up learning how to read lomaji singing <laughs> so that's so my my my, my church my, my church upbringing was very much influenced by the uh, by 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 the Balam Singh Si uh, Lomaji thinking so it's it very relate, related to, to, to Taiwanese culture in that sense in terms of its, its linguistic use in the church so that's 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 one 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 big area of influence uh, secondly I was a, a colleague of Professor C.S. Song. 
呃，双呃，双转型，双转型，呃，读书。I was, I was his his colleague for fifteen years, teaching at a at Pacific School of Religion, and、uh, and and Reverend Song, Professor Song, and I have have remained very close friends. He he has retired back in、uh, in in Taiwan.、Uh, He is he is into his eighties. I think he's about eighty five now. No, eighty, eighty six or eighty seven. Still very active, still teaching, and occasionally when I go to Taiwan, I would visit him. Thirdly, I continue to have very deep connections with with Taiwan. And I have a lot of friends in Taiwan, and have a lot of friends in uh, in in uh, especially in uh, in in uh, Thailand. And so, when the earthquake happened,、mm. as soon as I got the news, I I email and I went on Facebook to、uh, to to check up on my friends.、Uh, one of my very close friends in in Taiwan is a.、Uh, Mpeko Boxu, Mpeko Boxu, who who is now the、uh, vice president of、uh, of, of Changyong Christian University. He was formerly president of、uh, of, of Tainan Theological Seminary, and so it is it, it is it is the deep kind of、uh, of of friendship that I have with the、uh, with 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 colleagues and、uh, and former students. I also had the opportunity to、uh, to teach at、uh, in at Yishan Theological Seminary, Yokshan, Sinhangi, and I was I I spent two weeks there in、uh, in in Hualien, so、uh, had a lot of、uh, of 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 experience and an affinity with、uh, with 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 Taiwanese, and so.、Uh, okay, Coming to 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 all of you is also like always like coming home, and for also for a a period of time when I was in Northern California, I was I was serving as a supply pastor of a Taiwanese Methodist church, and preached there twice a month for the congregation. And uh, uh, I would I would preach in English, and、uh, it will it will be in it will be translated. But every month I would also do the the sacraments, Holy Communion, for them. And I、uh, I I I forced myself to do it in Taiwanese, so I was able to do do the Holy Communion in Taiwanese. So this is this this is to say that、uh, that. I always enjoy being with with the Taiwanese community, and、uh, every time I go to Asia, very often I would also make a、uh, make my way to to Taiwan to to renew my my friendships with、uh, a lot of、uh, of friends there. Ah,、uh, uh, Professor Gao would、uh, would tell you that I've been trying to to get her to spend <laughs> more time in Taiwan. Yes, I have spent more time in Taiwan than 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 she has. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this will happen. Uh, this whole topic of、uh, of interreligious work is something that is very very close to my heart, and uh, uh, I I will mention in、uh, in in what I will be saying, partly because of my own family background, but also because of my own own intellectual work, my own scholarly work. That I have come to 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 embrace this kind of interreligious、uh, uh, theological perspective.、Uh, in 1991, when I was just almost completing my my doctoral dissertation, I was invited to Pacific School of Religion, where Professor C. S. Song was teaching. To interview for their faculty position in Old Testament. At the interview with the faculty, I was asked many, many questions by the faculty.、Uh, in fact, faculty search is the is the worst kind of search. <laughs> anyone, 
would go through. Mm -hmm. In most other profession, you, you have one interview, mostly. But at, if, for faculty searchers, you have probably usually a two-day process. Mm -hmm. So it was a long process. And over the years, I have forgotten any question that was asked of me in that interview, except for this one question. A question by Dr. Derwood Foster, who was professor of Christian theology at the time. He asked me this, how would you define yourself theologically? How do I identify myself theologically? I had to think for a moment and then proceeded to respond to him that I define myself as a Christian pluralist. I will explain what pluralism is all about. In fact, from, for, that was a spur of the moment response. I had never ever used the term Christian pluralist in my life before that time. Having been a student of theology of religions, I was familiar with all those theological categories of exclusivism, inclusivism, and pluralism. What Dr. Lane was, was, was talking about in terms of the, uh, of, of the of, uh, especially in terms of what uh, the Orthodox Jews were, were saying in relation to, to Christians and, and what the uh, Jews for, for, for Jesus were saying, those are, those are all dealing with these categories of exclusivism, inclusivism, and pluralism. While my own theological position was leading more and more toward pluralism, I had, as I've said, I have never ever before that time identified myself as a Christian pluralist. I went on to explain exactly what I mean by pluralism. Pluralism is that truth claim, that, that the truth claims within other religious traditions are equally valid. And that Christianity is but one of the paths of a human divine encounter. I also, I, I also explained too that in order for one to be a true pluralist, one needs to be rooted within a specific religious tradition. In my own personal religious journey, I had chosen to ground myself within the Christian tradition and take seriously the truth claims of Christianity. And in fact, as I grow older and older and, uh, and, and given my own religious journey, I have become more and more convinced that of, of, the, of, of my own choice, that this is a choice that I made. This is not just something that, that I inherited from my, parent, my, my, my mother or my, or my grandparents. I had to, to, to make that intentional choice that I am a Christian, that I affirm the religious, the, the, uh, the, 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 the religious teachings of Jesus the Christ and of others, that it is something that I continue to root myself within. Later, when I joined the, the uh, faculty that the fall semester in 1991, uh, Professor Dilwood then told me that my response to the question earned his positive vote. So, so <laughs> he, he, he was very glad of, of, of how I described myself uh, uh, theologically. And so, uh, for, for me, that, that was a, a very strong affirmation. 
My coming to identify myself as a Christian pluralist is a journey unto itself. I was born and raised in Malaysia, a country that was once considered to be a grand experiment in multi-ethnicity, multiculturalism, and multi-religiosity. Ah, today, as I step back to, to uh, and, and see what is going on in Malaysia, some of you may know what is going on to Malaysia. My heart continues to be broken because of the uh, of, of 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 the way that uh, that that uh, that that Islamic fundamentalism mm -hmm. has also taken on, uh, taken over in many parts of life in Malaysia, including the political world. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result of that, much of what we value in terms of the multi-ethnicity, multiculturalism, multi-religiosity is being destroyed. And I'm saying that not only as a Christian. I have very good Muslim friends who, are, who, who continue to lament the same kind of situation. I have Buddhist friends who are lamenting the same kind of situation. This was supposed to be a grand experiment. But, as, uh, 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 but what happened is that certain groups took over and destroyed the entire fabric of what could have been a model for what multi-culturalism, multi-religiosity multi can be all about. I was raised a Christian by my mother. My, uh, my grandparents, from my, my maternal grandparents, were converted to Christianity through the evangelical work of Dr. John Song. Dr. John Song was from the Fujian province, and in fact, from uh, from 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 my own, from that part of the of, of China where but my own an ancestors had come from, uh, the uh, uh, from from Putian. Uh, I was able to, uh, just this past November to go to China and visit visit the uh, tombstone of uh, of doc Dr. John Song, and so it was it, it was a, a deep connection for me. So I was raised a Christian and grew up and went to school with Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, Taoist, and Sikh friends. But the Christianity I grew up with was strongly evangelical and exclusivist. And I was taught in my upbringing that salvation is through Jesus Christ alone. I grew up with a strong notion of religious arrogance and was completely dismissive of other religious traditions. My paternal side, my father's side of the family were adherents of Buddhism and Chinese religiosity. Mm -hmm. The kind of exclusivism often put me put my immediate family in tension with the extended family. Mm -hmm. There were always implicit and explicit attempts to convert them. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, my, my, fa my own father did not become a Christian until sometime into his, his mid 40s. So, for, for, for 20 some years, I was, I, I was basically raised as a Christian, but my father was, was not a Christian. Mm -hmm. While I was studying theology in college in preparation to be a pastor, one day I received a call from home telling me that my paternal grandmother had passed away. My grandmother, on my father's side, and not accepted Jesus as a personal savior, and all of a sudden, I felt an overwhelming sense of failure. My belief system was completely disoriented. And it was at that, at, at that point that I found myself plunged into a crisis of faith. As someone who was in seminary and, pre and, and preparing 
to, to be in full-time ministry, to be a pastor, I had failed completely. I had failed to save my grandmother. So in the midst of that theological crisis, I sought the help of a, a professor who was a missionary. We began to explore together my conceptualization of God. Who is God to me? And he helped me to see that in my theology, I had somehow inadvertently put God into a box. <coughs> that my God was only so small that I can contain God in this space. I began to see that I could, I could not continue I could not continue to pretend to try to play God in my life. I have to let God be God. I began to recognize that if God is to continue to be a mystery in my life, then I could never ever have God completely figured out. The mystery of God is far too great for any single one of us ever to figure it out. And all we are left as people of faith are but glimpses of who this God, of, of who this God is. And as a result of that, a new religious journey began for me where I was, where I, I was willing to be comfortable never to say that I have completely understood God. And thus began my own religious journey to a pluralism, as I learned to appreciate people of other religious tradition, ever more so deeply. And I know that somehow it is possible for God to reveal God's love in whatever way God chooses. And I became comfortable dealing with that. In fact, my earliest lessons of learning to appreciate people of other religious traditions came from my wife's grandmother. She was a deeply religious woman in her practice of Buddhism and Chinese religiosity. She was even shamanistic and people in the community would come to seek her help and count, consulted her for matters of health and well-being. My, 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 the, the, the home that my wife grew up with was, was, was like a temple. People come and uh, come and go, come and go, and, uh, and, and to, 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 to pray at, at the altars that were set up or, or to, to talk to, to my wife's grandmother. My wife's grandmother and, and I had many inter-religious conversations in the sitting room and over the night dining table. Never, never did I ever hear, hear my wife's grandmother speak ill of Christianity or demean my faith and beliefs system. On the contrary, she knew that I was preparing to be a pastor. She affirmed my faith and my religious commitment. In turn, I learned much about Buddhism and Chinese religions, much more than I ever did in courses of Buddhism and Chinese religions in seminary. I learned to appreciate her religiosity and her own path for the encounter with the divine. She was the one who enriched my journey in religious pluralism. What is pluralism? Uh, I, I want to, to, uh, to, to borrow the, uh, from the work of Diana Eck, mm. one of the, the most significant scholars who, who, have done a, who, who has done a lot of work on, in religious pluralism. 
she uses four points to help us understand what pluralism is all about. First, she say, pluralism is not diversity alone. Pluralism is, uh, is in the context of diversity, but it's not just diversity. But pluralism is the energetic engagement with diversity. Today, where, wherever we go, even in, uh, in, in so many places in, uh, in, in the United States today, diversity is a given. All kinds of diversity, including religious diversity. But pluralism is, is about how we engage the diversity. Diversity can and has meant the creation of religious ghettos with little traffic between or among them. There will be diversity. The, uh, the Muslim community can, 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 uh, can have their own space. That they can continue to, 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 to worship the, 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 the way that, that they, have, they have been practicing. The uh, Chinese community can do that. The Jewish community. If there is no interaction, no engagement, there is no pluralism at work. Today, religious diversity is a given, but pluralism is not. It is an achievement. We have to work at it. Mere diversity without real encounter and relationship will yield increasing tensions in our societies. Uh, we see that in the rhetoric of politicians today, particularly uh, 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 toward the Muslim community and uh, and. Uh, uh, many of us continue to be to to to, to be very di distressed about what is going on. Secondly, Diana X said, "Pluralism is not just tolerance, but the active seeking of understanding across lines of differences. Tolerance is a necessary public virtue, but it does not require Christians and Muslims, Hindus, Jews." Buddhists and others to know anything about one another. We can just tolerate what they do. But that is not what pluralism is all about. Toler tolerance is, is too thin a foundation for a world of religious difference and proximity. It does nothing to remove our ignorance of one another and leaves in place the stereotype, the half-truths, the fears that underlie old patterns of division and violence. In the world in which we live today, our ignorance of one another will be increasingly costly. Third, Diana Eck mentioned that pluralism is not relativism, but the encounter of commitments. The new paradigm of pluralism does not require us to leave our identities and our commitments behind. For pluralism is the encounter of commitments. It means holding our deepest differences, even our religious differences, not in isolation, but in relationship to one another. Fourth, pluralism is based on dialogue. The language of pluralism is that of dialogue and encounter, give and take, criticism and self-criticism. Dialogue means both speaking and listening, and that process reveals both common understandings and real differences. Dialogue does not mean everyone at the table will agree with one another. Pluralism involves the commitment to being at the table with one's commitments. You see, it is out of that, 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 that the context of the of of uh, of of Diana X understanding that I, I, I begin to, to see my own identity as a Christian pluralist, how that uh, intersects with with uh, Diana X thinking, that I am deeply committed, I am deeply committed to my own Christian identity, and I can only be a, a true pluralist with that kind of commitment to my specific religious identity and out of that to be in dialogue, to be in engagement with people of other religious traditions. Uh, the, the, 
the, the, the other important thing to, to note in, uh, in this kind of inter-religious work that, that, we, that, that we are engaging in is that, as Diana had pointed out, that the acknowledgement of, of differences. Uh, it is not just a matter of finding our commonalities. There will, there will be commonalities, but there will also be some deep differences about the way that we worship, about how we think about God, how we think about the divine, and about our human divine relationship. This, list, this leads me to, to talk about what, what we have been doing at Claremont School of Theology. Claremont School of Theology was started, uh, in fact, our history dates back to 1885. And uh, it was started with the, with, uh, with the donation of a, a, a Methodist clergy person by the name of Charles McClay, who, who decided to, to, to give to the church a piece of property in San Fernando. And there started the college, the Maclay College of Theology. By about uh, 1890, by, by about 1890, five years later, the uh, school moved to the University of Southern California, USC. USC was a Methodist school when it started. And it was a Methodist school until 1956, when because of the changes in the laws of, of California, the school need to end, decided that it needed to end its relationship with the church in order to do to, to carry out its own mission. So by 1956, uh, in 1956, the, the, the Methodist Church here in Southern California decided to, to start from, from scratch a new freestanding theological school no longer having any affiliation with a university. But they decided that they need to be in the vicinity of, uh, of uh, to, to be a, in an intellectual context. And so they decided, because the Claremont Colleges are there already, they decided to, to move to Claremont to start a new school of theology. Uh, over the years, it has gone through many, many name changes. Its, it's first name was, uh, when it was incorporated, it was called the Southern California School of Theology. Then it became, it became known as the School of Theology at Claremont. And uh, now today we, we, we call ourselves Claremont School of Theology. Uh, who knows when when we will change <laughs> our name again? Uh, but right from the beginning, when the Methodists started the School of Theology, the Methodists decided that this is not going to be just a school for the Methodists. It will be an ecumenical school. It will be a school that will that, that is open to, to students from all different denominations. So from, from its, its early times, we have students from the disciples, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, disciples from uh, UCC, Presbyterians, Lutherans, Episcopalians, a lot of different denominations have, uh, have sent students to Claremont School of Theology. Our faculty had been very ecumenical from the beginning too. Today, our faculty continue to be very ecumenical. Uh, we, we have faculty who are United Methodists, we have faculty who are, uh, who are disciples, uh, Roman Catholics, and uh, we also have faculty who are Presbyterians. How many of you are Presbyterians? I think three, right? Me, Dwayne. And uh, Andrew. And Andrew, yes. Andrew. Yeah. So we have three Presbyterians on our faculty. And, uh, and, and that for, for, for us is, is, is very important. 
But we also, since uh, for a long time now, we also have a faculty from other religions. Our Old Testament professor is, is, is Jewish. We also have a Muslim faculty who is teaching inter-religious studies. And all these faculty from, from the other denominations and other religious traditions contribute to what we today feel called to do in terms of the kind of inter-religious theological education. So today, as a seminary, we describe ourself, uh, ourselves as United Methodist, ecumenical, and inter-religious because of our commitment to doing inter-religious theological education. This commitment to inter-religious theological education did not just happen in the last few years. Mm -hmm. We have had a long history of involvement in inter-religious dialogue. One of our, our, our earliest professor at uh, when, when we started at Claremont School of, uh, at Claremont was Professor John Cobb. Mm -hmm. He joined the faculty in 1998 and uh, continued to, to serve on the faculty uh, in, uh, in 1958 and continued to serve on the faculty until his retirement in, uh, in 2000. And so, uh, no, 1990, when he was 65. Professor John Cobb was one of the, the, the earliest theologians mm -hmm. to push for inter-religious dialogue. Mm -hmm. He engaged in Buddhist-Christian dialogue earlier than a lot of other people. And it was through Professor John Cobb that the School of Theology invited Masao Abe, mm -hmm. Masao Abe from Japan, to be a visiting scholar at Claremont School of Theology on multiple occasions. And very often when, uh, when, 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 uh, when Dr. Abe was there, there will be Christian Buddhist dialogue and uh, open conversations uh, for the community. To the extent that I was, I was reminded by, uh, by, by someone who, who, who was from that, that, that era who told me that the dialogue between, uh, that, that the, the Buddhist Christian dialogue at the time was often referred to as the Kok Abe dialogue. Mm. Because they were two so, both of them were so significant thinkers, one Christian and one Buddhist. And so we have a, a, a long history of inter-religious commitment to the kind of theological education that we need to do for the kind of world we, we live in today. Why is this so important for Claremont School of Theology? We decided that this, is, this has become increasingly important because of the kind of world we live in. Just look at Southern California, our context. There is, a, there is no majority population. Uh, the, the, uh, in, in the entire state of California, the Hispanic population has now surpassed the white population. But that has happened a long time ago in Southern California itself. Religious diversity. You look at, at all uh, throughout Southern California. You see mosques, temples, Jewish synagogues, uh, Sikh temples. This is the kind of world that we live in here in Southern California. Anywhere you go, there is diversity. And how do we respond to the kind of diverse world instead of just, uh, just people living in, uh, in, 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 their, in, their, in, in their ethnic religious silos? How do we begin to engage one another in, 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 in appreciation of the, the kind of pluralism that we can continue to, 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 to build and expand on? It was in uh, around 
around nine, uh, oh, oh eight or oh nine, right? For what? When uh, when when Jerry Campbell began to to engage some yeah. of the different partners, right? Yeah. My my predecessor began to 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 be in conversation with the with uh, with with the Jewish community and uh, with the, the the Muslim community, so that we can that they, they in in order to to rethink theological education. And uh, it was out of that that we that the, uh, the the first Islamic graduate school was created, Bayan Claremont, mm -hmm. and and that has uh, enabled us to do the kind of uh, of interreligious education that we, we we know is needed for the kind of world that we live in. So today. We have three partners that are very close working partners with us. The Academy for Jewish Religion, which is in, uh, in Koreatown. Uh, Bay and Claremont, which is, which is housed on our campus on the School of Theology. And our third partner is the University of the West which is here in Rosemary. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is part of the uh, Fo Shan tradition, uh, very, uh, started by the uh, same people. The university was started by the same people who founded Silai Temple. And today, we have very close working relationship among our four institutions. We have students from all our four institutions often in, uh, in the same classroom together, taking classes together. And this has created a significant impact on our Christian students. Mm -hmm. our, our Christian students are, are now understanding why they need to, to, to root themselves very strongly within the Christian tradition. We have said, as, as, as faculty, we have, we have often said to them that if they do not root themselves strongly within their own religious tradition, they have no place in the dialogue. It is common for, 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 for those of us who, are, who, ha, who have been engaged in inter-religious dialogue with, uh, with, with the Jewish community, <coughs> with the Muslim community, to hear how grounded they are in their scriptural texts as well as in their tradition. Uh, very often, as a Christian, I, I, I feel that we are the ones that, 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 are, that, that know our, our text and, uh, and tradition the least. Our students now are, are getting it, that if they do not know their text well, they are in a classroom with a Muslim student, for example, who can quote the Quran and talk about and interpret the Quran. They will be completely embarrassed if they do not know their tradition. So this has really helped our students to, 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 to be even more serious with learning their own tradition. Uh, so what, what we are hoping to do out of this is to is to be able to prepare, train and prepare religious leaders for the Christian community who can work with others to, to across religious lines in order for us to create a difference for the kind of world that we live in. And when in, in the many occasions when we have talked about why we are doing this. In, in my travels in different parts of the world, people are beginning to see why in so all over the world, communities did need this kind of education, need this kind of inter-religious education because the world we live in is no longer homogenous. We need to, 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 to be, be, be more literate in terms of other religious traditions in order that we can together build the kind of world that is important for us. And so uh, 
our program today uh, draws draw students from different parts of the world. Uh, we have a, a, a student from Burma mm. who is in her second year, Asa. Mm -hmm. When I asked her why would she choose to come to Claremont School of Theology, her response was she was looking for a program in inter-religious education mm -hmm. because of, of the uh, conflict that, that they that that they continue to experience in Burma. Mm -hmm. Between the Buddhists and the Muslims and, uh, and, and Christians are, are, are often in the mix of all that. They need to begin to think about the kind of education that will be helpful for their own Burmese context. <coughs> and, uh, and, and this is this is just one story, but it is it's true of, uh, of, of so many communities. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a student from Pakistan uh, a Christian student from Pakistan, they are a very small minority. Mm -hmm. uh, he lost his family in the bombing in, uh, in August of 2013. When he decided that he, he wanted to, to study theology, he decided that he, he, he want to, he, that, that, he, that what will be most helpful for him is to learn about other religious traditions as well, so that he can go back to Pakistan to work with Christians and Muslims to help repair their own society. So this is the kind of work that, that we are passionate about and, uh, and, and I, am, uh, I am so committed to, 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 to this kind of theological education because of my own upbringing and background. <coughs> and to be able to be involved in this kind of the the theological education that can, that has the potential to to create an impact for the world that we live in uh, is, is something that I, I, I feel very, very privileged and honored to do. So uh, I'm going to, to end there uh, and uh, let Professor Kao take over and then <laughs> we, we will engage in a in conversation. Okay. Great. Can, yeah. Thank you.